Today we're going to learn about creating an inscribed circle within a triangle. So our first step is that we need to actually have a triangle. So I'm going to use my polygon creation tool and I'm going to click on three points, A, B, and C. And to close the polygon you need to re-click on A again and there's my triangle. Um, you want to probably make sure that the points are not equilateral or really nice, so drag them around a little bit. So that looks pretty good to me. The next step is to find what's called the in-center of the triangle. And the in-center can be found by constructing the three angle bisectors. And it turns out that GeoGebra has a tool for that. So if you go under the fourth tool item, where it says perpendicular line, and you click on the little red dropdown, it'll give you the angle bisector tool. And what the angle bisector tool will do is if you give it an angle, it'll give you the line that splits that angle into equal parts. So for example, if I want an angle bisector at point C, I can click on point A, point C, and then point B, and that'll construct a line that appears to cut the angle formed at vertex C into two spots. You can do the same thing at angle uh, for the angle at vertex A by clicking on point C, then A, then B. And the reason why it's making the line through vertex A is because it was the middle point that we clicked on. So if I wanted to make the angle bisector at vertex B, I could click on A, then B, then C, or I could click on C, then B, and then A. And now I've got my three angle bisectors. And something interesting should be happening now. And that is, these three angle bisectors seem to be intersecting at a common point. And this common point we're going to give a name called the in-center. And it's something called a point of concurrency, a point where all three lines intersect at the same spot. So we'd like to find where that point is. And if you go to the point tool and click on the drop down, there's something called the intersection of two objects tool. And what it'll allow you to do is click on two things and find where they intersect. Now it's a little finicky. You can't select all three. It gets confused. So make sure you only have two of the lines selected and then click on it. And it should make a point. Now what's supposed to be special about this point is its distance from the size of the triangle should be the same in any direction you go. And if you just kind of eyeball it, it doesn't look like that because this distance doesn't appear to be the same as that distance. And the issue is that the distance we're talking about should be the perpendicular distance. And right now, this is not a perpendicular line to the side. So we actually don't want to look at the angle bisectors anymore. So I'm going to hide them. And the way you do that is by getting the arrow selection tool and by right clicking on the object. And you can turn off the show object option. So I'm going to hide my angle bisectors so they are now gone. What I want instead now is to create the perpendicular distance from this point to the size of the triangle. And I can do that by going back to the construction tool, um, this one right here where we got the angle bisector, and do the drop down. You can see that there's a perpendicular line tool. And I'm going to go ahead and create a perpendicular line between this point and that side. And you can see that does appear to form a right angle. And so what I'm going to do now is create the point of intersection between the two sides. And now what I should be able to do is using the circle creation tool is make a circle with D as my center and E as a point on the circle. And it might be a little hard to tell this, but the distance from D to E is the same as from D to this side of the triangle and from D to this side of the triangle. We know that because each of these links is a radius. So it does appear to be a circle that is inscribed within the triangle with D being our end center. To test it out I'm going to go ahead and get my arrow tool and I'm going to drag around a vertex and just see how the circle moves on the inside. And You'll notice that no matter how or where I move the vertex C and I can move any vertex the circle stays within the triangle and the circle stays tangent to each of the sides of the triangle. So it is indeed, uh, this is indeed the inscribed circle and D is the in center. 